Today we're talking about moments and static equilibrium, which is an important part of engineering because when you put a force on something, it can twist and turn and move. So this goes back to biomechanics, which is effectively using mechanical concepts like forces to study biological systems. So Giovanni Alfonso Borelli is considered the father of biomechanics looking at force and displacement studies, looking at the muscles and skeleton, how that works in the body around 1680, which is actually before Newton and his laws of motion. So looking at the mechanics and forces inside the body hundreds of years ago. So biomechanics is a very important area because we talk about cells and tissues and organs and fluids and implants and devices. All these different things have basically something to do with or relate back to forces because you can look at stiffness, you know, different correlations with structures, uh, how the forces affect a fluid for blood flow, um, implants and all the forces on the implant, especially in the bone, and lots of different devices because we want to talk about breaking things or predicting lifetime of a failure device. So we're going to talk about statics. So if we balance all the forces operating on something, it will be static, but we also, or at least it won't accelerate. Technically, we have to say it will be balanced. The object won't accelerate. So if it's going a certain speed, it won't speed up or slow down. It won't accelerate or decelerate if all the forces are balanced. Usually we don't have things moving continuously in uh, biomedical engineering, but we talk about that just to be complete. So you have to balance the forces in the X, Y, and Z direction if you're doing a 3D, but you also have to balance the rotational movement. So we have to look at rotational moments, and we need all rotational moments to balance so that we get to static equilibrium. Now, what is a moment? A moment is really a vector quantity, but in the 2D case, we're just going to talk about the magnitude of the moment. That's the important quantity we want to have. So if we have a 2D case, it's the force times the distance. So the overall moment is this force times distance. So if we have a pivot point, the point where something pivots around, and we know the distance from that pivot point out to the line of action, a line going through the force. We have this force, F. Basically, if we have a lever arm here, and the force is acting on the end of that lever arm, it's going to pivot around this in the counterclockwise direction. This perpendicular di distance is D. The force is F, so we get our size F. Uh, force is size F. It's going to get a moment rotating the counterclockwise direction. So that line of action is important to understand what direction the force is and the distance from the tail of the force to the pivot point is also important. Like I said, those are the two things, quantities we need to evaluate to look at the moment, uh, the twisting moment around that pivot point. The biggest convention we have to remember is that the tendency for a force to rotate counter clockwise is going to be positive. If you're going clockwise, that's a negative moment. So counterclockwise is always taken to be positive, and clockwise is negative. So we always have, since we have forces in newtons, and we're multiplying by distance, it's going to be a newton meter. We can add moments, and we're talking about 2D, so everything's coplanar, around that point. So we can add all those different moments, and we sum them all together. And if you remember that line of action and the moment axis are the important parts. Now, a scalar formulation, if we have this force F, you see the two green lines here, length B and length A. Now, we should take this line of action back to this point and figure out the distance from that origin to that point. We know F along that direction. Now, we could solve for the moments doing it that way, but you have to figure out all sorts of stuff to figure out, I guess, geometry to figure out that distance d. It may not be very easy to figure out that distance d. The easier way to do it is to break it down into Cartesian elements. So we have this force vector is broken down to fx and fy. And then we can move the moments, just like we move forces, height head to tail, we know it's Part B, this lever arm B, is affected by Fx. So, and this lever arm A 
we can slide it down to the origin to that pivot point and then it's a, we're going to be affected by Fy. So effectively we move this bar back to the origin. He's only affected by the Fy component of the force which is going to create a counterclockwise rotation. The Fx component of the force is going to affect the B lever arm and that's going to be a clockwise moment. So we have two moments effectively. This force is very easy to break it down into components, the Fx and Fy. And once we do that, we slide the lever arm down and we slide the forces over to the B lever arm and the A lever arm to get two separate moments. Now, the static equilibrium. We need it to be static so that we know that nothing's moving, everything's balanced. We can do this force balance and moment balance on an object. So we have a free body diagram, and for this class, we're not going to start coming up with our own free body diagrams. You're going to be given the free body diagrams. We apply the equations of equilibrium, which are basically the three equations we have for f in the x direction, the for forces in the x direction, forces in the y direction, and the moments. And then you solve for the unknown values. And that's basically we're coming up with a model of the system, given a, a diagram with all the forces, distances, and angles. You come up with all of those values. So we have a schematic. You'd have to convert this into a free body diagram. They're typically going to look like this, where you have a pivot point, you have forces in blue, which are described by size F2, size angle 30, size F3, angle 45 in this direction, um, this distance 0.3, this distance 0.5, this distance 0.2 for F1. So once you have those three forces and these three distances, we can start to figure out what actually goes on in the system. So when we go through here, we have to apply the equations for static equilibrium. We're going to break down this F1 doesn't have to be broken down. It's only in the y direction. F2 can be broken down in F2x and F2y. So we know it's composed of F2x and F2y, and F3 is going to be F3x and F3y. Now this is why we have to know our trig. The F2 value F2x, we're going to do all of our x values. F1 doesn't have an x value. F2 has an x value, and F3 has an x value. So the cosine of 30 times F2 should give you F2x. The cosine of 45 times F3 will give you F3x, but we put a negative sign in because it's pushing to the left. So we, once we've, if we're trying to find the magnitude of F2, the magnitude of F3, basically that will set up our system. So we'll have three unknowns, F2 and F3, the size of this vector, the size of this vector, and F1 as well. So that's the x direction. We only have two components in the x direction. For the y direction, we know F1 is all in the y direction negative, so there's a negative sign here. F2y is positive, and it is related to this angle 30, so sine of 30 times F2 gives us the F2y value. And here, F3, the y direction of that, is also positive, so it's sine of 45 times F3 to give us that positive value there. Now, for the moments, we have three forces acting at three different distances. For this example, only the y, the y component of F1 and the y component of F2 and the y component of F3 affect the moments. So F1 is going to be in the clockwise. It's going to be a negative moment. It's going to be F1 times 0.2. F2, but we need the F2y component. F2y is sine 30 times 0.4. So sine 30 times point, oh, sine 30 times F2 is the Fy component. And the distance for F2, since it's affecting at this point, and that point is 0.4 meters away from the pivot point, it's going to be 0.4 times the Fy component. It's working in the counterclockwise direction, so it's a positive moment. Now, the other one, the last one, is this F3. We know F3y is working at 0.5 meters away from the pivot point. So F3y, which is sine 45 times F3 times 0.5, gives us that final moment. And it, since it is also, like F2, in the counterclockwise direction, it's going to be a positive moment. Now, these are the three equations. You can set these up. Remember the signs for the different values. We set those up in those equations. We evaluate the, the sines and cosines for the angles we know, do know, and it actually ends up being a set of linear equations. 
So you can put this in matrix vector form and solve for values for F1, F2, and F3. And that's effectively what we're doing for static equilibrium.